Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Greg DeSell from TechNEC. Thank you for joining us as part of TechNEC's ongoing webinar tech series as today our friends from Yamaha Unified Communications are here to talk about the incredible technology in the Odessia multi-beam ceiling microphone system. Uh, before we get going, I wanna thank our friends at Yamaha and also take a moment to point out a few things as we move along today. We have set aside about 45 minutes to go over the key talking points of the Odessia system and 15 minutes at the end for a Q&A session. Please take note of the Q&A section in your Zoom control panel. Uh, we welcome all your questions and we'll do our best to answer them throughout the presentation or in the Q&A session. And for any we may not get to, we will certainly answer those directly post presentation. Uh, also, if you're experiencing any video and audio issues, please alert us in the chat section. And now that we have the general housekeeping out of the way, we can get started. We are excited to partner with Yamaha Unified Communications on the Odessia. It opens up a world of opportunities for contractors, installers, system integrators, any of those who are working with educational institutions, corporate entities, and government facilities. And that said, I happily introduce today's host from Yamaha, Tim Mackey and Greg Carswell. Both are experts in the Yamaha Odessia system. Uh, welcome and thanks for joining us today, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We're, uh, we're happy to be here. Thanks, Greg. Uh, and on behalf of Yamaha UC, we, we welcome everybody to this uh, webinar today and, and demonstration. I think you're going to be as excited about this solution as we are once you see how easy it is to uh, install and operate. Um, and it's, as, as Greg mentioned, it's just a great solution for a lot of different uh, scenarios. So we're going to take you through the presentation and a quick uh, demonstration of it. I'll be manning the Q&A in the chat. So if you have any kind of questions at all, please feel free to uh, uh, ask them. And I'm going to turn this over now to really the guy who's the expert is Tim Mackey. And uh, I'll put my, uh, my camera on mute. Thanks, everyone. Well, welcome everybody and uh, thank you for your time. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me very well right now. Um, so yeah, privilege to work for Yamaha. I've been a bit of a, a motorcycle nut my whole life. I first became a Yam aware of Yamaha through motorcycles and then guitars and drums and whatnot. But um, here's, here's a, a quick history of the company, but really pertinent to us right here is entered the US market in 1960 but really been doing pro audio and professional uh, audio processing for over 50 years, since 68, 69, been in this business. So Yamaha is, is, is uniquely positioned with a lot of technology to bring together to what we're seeing today with the Odessia system, we'll show you. In other words, we're leveraging technology from many of the divisions and bringing it into the UC space. And Greg and I came on board with the Revo Labs acquisition, uh, which was back in 2014. So again, like I mentioned, there's so many different divisions of Yamaha, right? I've highlighted a few here that I think are, you know, really pertinent to the pertinent to today's discussion. Yeah, there's a tongue twister. Uh, so here we are up in the right hand corner. This is us, Yamaha uh, Unified Communications. But um, I actually got to go to Japan two years ago now in uh, 2019. And I was blown away to see, uh, I didn't know, for example, these Virage mixers are towards a million dollars a piece. And that Yamaha really dominates that signal processing and live, live sound space as well. Uh, over here, down in the uh, uh, consumer electronic uh, home theater division, for example, when you buy a Yamaha 7.1 surround sound system, it's going to come with a microphone that you're going to put on the couch in the sit sitting location, and it's going to play pink noise throughout the speaker system, and it's going to analyze the acoustics of that room, and it's going to build filters and, and really tune it for that specific uh, listening location and uh, apply curves based on those the acoustics of that room. We're leveraging that technology right now in the UC space and bringing that in. Also, I didn't realize uh, that Yamaha is like the Cisco of routing and switching in Japan. They have, I think, about a 55% market share over there. It's just amazing. And they are the largest single provider of networking infrastructure for small to mid-sized businesses in Japan as well. So anyway, uh, again, I think Yamaha is really uniquely positioned. Uh, not just with audio technology, but with the automation we're going to look at in this product today. Here is our headquarters in Japan. This is the new $100 million innovation center um, in Japan. It actually houses 
uh, our Innovation Road Museum down here on this first floor as well. We have literally hundreds of patents applicable to Yamaha. And all of the different audio divisions are under this roof, including we have the world's largest indoor echo chamber at 30 feet wide, 46 foot deep, and 43 feet high. Um, I used to work for an American DSP uh, manufacturer, and literally all of their test rooms could fit into one end of this, this chamber. It's just an amazing facility. We also have ergonomic evaluation rooms, sensory rating rooms, and really important to us in the UC space, reverberation chambers where they can adjust the time, the reverb time, the RT60 from 0.3 all the way up to 1.6 seconds. So they've got a, a really world-class facility for audio development for sure. Here's a quick look again. We are a world leader in the development of specialty audio processing chips and we're leading the way with AI and audio as well. With continued research into DSPs, this is actually one of our uh, speaker demo rooms. Uh, we have really world-class algorithms, both linear and non-linear. In fact, on the network side as well, Yamaha is one of the largest initial investors in Audinate, in Dante. So all of our products moving forward are absolutely network-centric, uh, uh, really an enterprise class, and, and, and all of our switches are Dante enhanced. So we'll take a look at that. But a last quick picture of that facility here is that just one room in that museum. It was an amazing facility. And up here in the right corner, is us, the UC products proudly displayed right next to all of those other divisions. So and the reason I like to touch on this is again, because there's a lot of synergy and sharing of development uh, under the hood of this place. And it leads us to people say to me, Tim, why Yamaha? And this really is why Yamaha. Again, I've worked for a lot of other manufacturers in this space, and not everybody brings all of these technologies to bear on their UC conferencing products. We do. The unique ones to Yamaha are human voice activity detection and that automatic audio tuning function I've kind of touched on a little bit already. But HVAD, we literally can differentiate between human speech and background noise. And that helps us with some of these features. For example, looking for steady state noises, right? We're looking to cancel out HVAC, fan noise, and whatnot. While other people have to tiptoe around the human speech range for fear of filtering the speech out, we don't. With HVAD, we can truly do a better job with noise reduction, filtering across the entire spectrum from 20 to 20. So again, let's take a look at Adaptive Echo Canceller. We're going to show you a quick little clip on how that works. Uh, we have one of the best echo cancelers in the business, Automatic Gain Control. We'll take a look at a demo of that at the end of this as well, where we can compensate for quiet talkers in a meeting, loud talkers in a meeting, and that sort of thing. Automatic Room EQ. And again, this isn't just in the Odessia. We have this in a number of our products. Our YBC 1000 has it as well. And literally, it's a process where we play pink noise through the speaker system and make predictions and calculations on the room acoustics based on what we're seeing in the microphone array. For example, if we see a resonance at around 7K, we might build a notch filter at that frequency to combat that. So we do really well in today's conference rooms, which have really moved away from the ANSI standards uh, in rooms. And now we have these rooms where they're all glass, reflective surfaces, no acoustic treatment whatsoever. These are the rooms that we're targeting. These are the rooms today where really these architectural considerations, corporate transparency have taken the place of acoustic considerations in these rooms. So these technologies are going to help, especially in those difficult acoustic rooms, especially the dereverberation technology that we bring in the YBC 1000 as well as the uh, Odessia system. So. Most of these technologies are embedded across our product line. Every single product, we try to put as many of these as we can in, right? You can't do some things with a single microphone solution, obviously, but take, for example, our YVC 200. This is a $189 device that I don't go anywhere without anymore. Well, before COVID, this was in my backpack. Every time I was checking into a hotel or on the road going anywhere, I'd have one of these with me. Very unique. And we could take a look at this another time, some of the cool, unique features of it. But we're going to show you a quick video of the YBC 200 in action. It's primarily a USB Bluetooth device. It will transition between those interfaces nicely. 10 hour battery, speaker mute, as well as mic mute. Really a well fleshed out product. Targeting these kinds of listening environments, it is an Omni mic, so you can have a bunch of people around it. But 
We have again embedded adaptive AEC, noise reduction, automatic gain control, HVAD. This thing also has a speaker port on it. I was in a noisy Starbucks down in Houston back in 2020, 2019 now. And I jumped on a Zoom call like this in a noisy environment. I put my earbuds in. I was able to hear that call perfectly. It was private because I had my earbuds in. And using the HVAD and the noise reduction, everyone on the far end had a great call with me in that noisy environment too. And by the way, with the HVAD, if it doesn't detect any human speech going on, it won't transmit even if you're not muted. So very cool technology. Now, back to that adaptive AEC. Most people wouldn't think about this, but just moving your laptop lid next to a UC device will affect that echo path. It absolutely will. Now, I used to joke a lot, you know, again, why Yamaha? I think anyone can make a plastic enclosure, a clamshell, put a speaker element in there and a microphone element. What we bring to the table is the processing between those two pieces. So here's a quick video. We made this at our headquarters. It's recorded on Zoom. We actually start with the Jabber Speak 510. It looks similar to ours, plastic, round. You know, what could be different? Well, I think the video will illustrate that. We'll start with the Jabra and then we'll go to the Yamaha YVC 200. In a typical meeting, you may not be always sitting still. Sometimes you move papers, your computer, or even the actual device. In this experiment, we're showing how the echo cancellation of a device can be affected by these changes. You may not even recognize that you are creating echo for the far end. Right now we're showing the Jabber Speak 510 MS. Did you notice any difference? And now we'll run the exact same scenario with the Yamaha. In a typical meeting, you may not be always sitting still. Sometimes you move papers, your computer, or even the actual device. In this experiment, we're showing how the echo cancellation of the device can be affected by these changes. You may not even recognize that you are creating echo for the far end. Right now, we're showing the Yamaha YBC 200. Did you notice any difference? So again, uh, very powerful. A very, very powerful demonstration, I think, and that leads us to the Odessia. So what we just looked at is a good example of Yamaha's uh, audio processing pow powers and technology in action in a meeting, really adding to the quality of that meeting. Now, the Odessia brings the second half of that all together as well. We're using Dante for the auto discovery and auto configuration of the system. This to me is really the game changer. This is the delivery on that promise we've all been talking about for about 10 years. Everyone's been saying, hey, AV and IT are coming together. AV and IT are merging, you know, that this is happening. Well, this really is it. I think Yamaha is leading the way with bringing automation to the UC space. So this is a silhouetted look at the system. It's really that simple. You have a microphone in the ceiling. You have line array speakers on the wall. You have a processor, an IO box, and all of them are a single Cat5 connection to this switch. That switch is the only thing you plug into 110 in the entire room. So you have a system that is simple to deploy that anyone can configure. You don't need to be an audio engineer to be able to configure the Odessia system. Now, the ceiling microphone, we're gonna take a look at the components. It can be used separately, and so can the line of speakers. They're, all, they're just a Dante product in that respect. But when you pair it together with the CR, you're gonna see what we can do on the auto discovery, auto tuning, auto configuration side with this product as well. So we're targeting about 90% of those rooms out there. You know, those small mid conference rooms up to a combined divide space, maybe up to about a 40 by 60 area. For all of your, all of your jobs, you know, your stadiums and everything else that comes in, you might wanna use our product separately for that. But what they've done with the Odessi is targeted 90% of those conferencing spaces that traditionally would require, you know, the traditional integration in that room. Now it is literally a plug and play and five mouse clicks. So let's take a look at it. <coughs> Excuse me for a second. So this is the meat and potatoes. This is a layer two look at it in this area. You go see more products in this family. But right now, this is the fully fleshed out um, uh, Adesia solution. You can do up to two of the ceiling microphones. So 
the new products, again, we've had switches, PoE plus switches from Yamaha, by the way, which are all Dante enabled. And really any layer two switch will do Dante. We're really talking about LLDP, which is link layer discovery protocol. So it doesn't have to be our switch. It could go under your corporate customer switch. But the second you mount these devices and literally plug them into this switch, you're gonna connect to the RMCR device, open up this GUI, and you're gonna go through a five-step process. And by the way, there's a video up on YouTube, I believe Greg released, uh, where I'm tuning my room here that you're listening to me on right now in that video, and it's literally five minute process. So you open up the GUI and the Dante uh, back end is gonna discover these devices. And you can actually click a button here in the GUI and flash the light on the device to make sure that's the one you want in case you're deploying multiple systems, you know, or you can use a MAC address, that sort of thing. But be aware, you can literally deploy as many of these on an enterprise network and be able to differentiate them that way. So you go, yes, these are my two speakers. This is my RMCG microphone. And you say, register those three devices. Then over here, it's going to assist you with your left and right speaker. Just like that home surround sound, it's going to say, is this your left one? This your right one? You can flash the buttons on them as well. And then the last step is you're going to execute it and be quiet. And you sit there for, I think Greg timed it, at 90 seconds, a minute and a half. And it's like spending a half a day in there as an audio engineer. It sets the initial gain structure, the far end audio levels, sets all the AEC. Everything is completely done, irrespective of your environment. This could be a single room, a big open area, and we'll take a look at that. But that is it. So this is the beauty of this. This is AV over IT. You plug and play, one single power source at the switch, five clicks of a mouse in the GUI, and you have world-class conferencing audio ready to go. So let's take a look at the real heart of this system right now, which is the, is the microphone, right? And we've got the IO box, the CR, but the microphone is, is really what's uh, uh, really advanced and new here. This is a conferencing microphone designed for conferencing. For example, it's not a choir mic. I couldn't have 30 people under this microphone sitting here singing in unison and have this pick them all up and transmit it to the far end. It wouldn't work. It doesn't do that. What it actually does is it puts a narrow focused beam on any HVAD source. So if it sees a person starting to speak, it's gonna put a beam on them. Suppose that person gets up and walks around the room. We are going to literally track them with speech tracking around that room. And then maybe Sally starts to talk, she'll get a beam. Dave starts to talk over here, he'll get a beam. Bob starts to talk, he'll get a beam. So you get the idea. All of the algorithms and the audio curves are designed for ceiling location using dynamic beam technology. These aren't the same curves we would have on say our gooseneck mics or tabletop mics. So this is a unique microphone for conferencing applications. We're literally trying to make it like everybody has their own personable wearable mic in the room. And it really is different from say the Shore mic in comparison for you, you don't have to set up any lobes. There are no null spots within the room. I could literally stand in this corner and I'll have a beam. In a typical nine to 10 foot ceiling, you're gonna get about a 25 foot up to 30 foot coverage area. And we're gonna take a look at my room. I'm in a 30 by 50 uh, garage workshop today in Austin, Texas. I'm working from home in my little man cave. And we'll take a look at how I've got my mounted as well. So this is kind of the heart of the system is the new microphone and the processing is all on board. And we'll look at that. So here's the components that are actually new is the RMCG and the RMCR. The line arrays we've had for a while, and these are very cool. We're going to start by taking a look at these. I wouldn't have thought, and I've been doing conferencing now for well over 15 years, I wouldn't have thought of line arrays in a conference room, but th these really are quite impressive. They're two inches wide, four inches deep, and 44 inches tall. They're fully ADA compliant when they're flush mounted to the wall, and they do come with the flush mount kit. There are 16 inch and a half match drivers uh, in each one of these and the amplifier section in the bottom. These are 30 watts a channel from the switch. It's PoE plus. Our switch is, is a eight port. That's 240 watts total out of that switch. But what's really cool about line arrays is they project very directionalized. Unlike a point source speaker where it's radiating in 360 degrees, I'm not bouncing off the floor and the ceiling with a line array. They are 170 degree horizontal dispersion, but 
only a 25 degree vertical dispersion. So they project right through the room without bouncing off the floor and ceiling. One of the really cool things about the VXLs is they're only 9 dB down at 40 feet. So that means I could be standing back here 40 feet away and only be 9 dB quieter than if I had my face against the speaker grill here. So now in this 40 foot room, I could have a 20 foot table in here and maybe only have a four or five dB variance across the table and audio level. It's almost like having a zone speaker system in the ceiling. So if you guys get a chance to get these VXLs in house, please play with them. They're truly awesome and just perfect for conferencing. Get a little sip of water there. So yeah, they ship with these brackets right here, but uh, I have mine on tripods, the same as Greg. You can get these tripod mounts, and we also have an articulated mount as well. Think of overhead in a really tall open area space, uh, but it does ship with these. They come in black and white that you can order from our SKUs, but hey, get funky with it, right? You can fully paint these. Again, here's the switch. The thing to know about this, it's a layer two technology. There's no logging into the switch, nothing to configure. Just about any layer, dumb layer two switch will support uh, Dante. So it doesn't have to necessarily be ours. But this is our switch, 240 watts, and it powers everything. This is the only thing you plug into the wall outlet. Pretty cool. Now, Yamaha is a very cool company, very classy. I really can't tell you. It's nice that we're not involved in any of this IP litigation. We're not infringing. They're very careful to not infringe on anybody's IP. We don't want to be involved uh, in the quagmire that is surrounding ceiling microphones. So this is not a complete tile replacement. It is slightly smaller than an actual ceiling tile. So when you take a look at this thing, you just cut a round hole in the ceiling tile, just like you would mounting a speaker, right? Now it does come with a T-bar kit, we'll take a look at that. So you would see just a teeny little bit of the ceiling tile around the outside of this thing. And that's how Yamaha is quite elegantly avoiding all of that litigation as far as that goes. But for the most part, when you look at it, you know, it's, it's almost a two by two ceiling tile size. Now, this is what it looks like flushed in on the ceiling. So this is what it would look like flushed in on that tile. We also support a visa mount, 100 millimeter pitch visa mount, visa mount and there are M6 thread uh, rigging points threaded rigging points for suspension as well. I'm hanging mine from some 16 gauge wire I got at Home Depot. So yeah, there are a number of options of mounting this, but uh, keep in mind when you order the Adesia RMCG microphone, it does come with the drop ceiling T-bar mounting kit included. So no extra SKU, number part number for that. The microphone comes in white and black, and we're gonna take a closer look now at the technology on this thing. But basically it's gonna focus on voices, it's like giving everyone a personal mic. We're using all of these technologies, these processing technologies within it. Now we brought, I was there two years ago and saw the prototype of this, and we actually brought the, the competition's mics in-house. The Sennheiser, the mic array actually used an X or a cross pattern. And the Shure actually used rings of mics, concentric rings, kind of like this uh, polo chart down here had a ring of mics, a ring of mics, and a ring of mics. Well, we developed our own patented spiral pattern. We played with many different patterns for this. And what we found is with this spiral, we had much better higher frequency, higher spectrum frequency response. This pattern sounds phenomenal. In fact, what blew my mind away is we actually end up with more equidistant spacing between the mics when they're laid out in this pattern than say concentric circles having a ring of mics, a ring of mics. When you take the grill off this mic, it almost looks like a shotgun random dispersion. And then you kind of look close and you're like, oh man, that's a spiral. So it's very, very cool development. And there are 64 microphone elements in this beam forming mic array. So we focus our beams down to about 15 degrees, really clean and tight. So if you just took a typical room, uh, looking at the shore mic, they, they have eight lobes you have to configure. Just dividing 360 by eight gives you a 45 degree lobe. That's that green representation you're looking at right here. Yes, with the shore, you can create a pretty narrowed beam with the, with the blue one, but not as narrow as ours. And you'd leave a lot of null spots in that room. Now with the 45 degree beam, it's not as clean and tight. You may have two people within that beam. You have a bit more background reverberance room noise in that beam. So the whole premise here is we're putting dynamic, narrow focus beams on the participants in the conference 
using this microphone technology. The other half of the puzzle that really brings this together is this really cool RMCR device. This is a one rack U high, it's a half a rack wide. Uh, you can get the rack mounting ears, but we also have, and I'll show you a picture uh, uh, up here in a second, an under table mounting bracket where you can mount it directly under the table, right? Because there's no power for this. It's really gonna be just a single cat five or more, but we'll look at that. So we've got an under table bracket. I picture this being in the room in the credenza as well as being in the rack. If you look at the front panel here, there's your Bluetooth pairing button. And by the way, back on that last slide, uh, oops, two slides back, just to be clear, we have Bluetooth, SIP, USB, line in and out for, co for codecs or lecture capture, and we'll look at that. And they're all bridgeable within this device. We've got just about every interface you'd want in a conference room covered with this input-output box. Very, very cool. In fact, we've even added two XLR adapters on the front panel of this for town hall type meetings locally in the room or voice lift. These are routed directly to the speakers with feedback suppressors on them. We, and we have added echo suppressors, not full echo cancellation, but echo suppressors, so that these could be, if you had two presenter mics to these two XLR inputs, those could get routed with the ceiling microphone arrays to the far end. But what's really cool here is being local reinforced in the room, I could even put a mixer in front of this and have maybe 20 mics reinforced into a local uh, auditorium area or larger uh, conferencing area. So very cool uh, add-in feature they put on the front of this where you can just walk up, plug in a dynamic handheld mic and do a tan ha town hall type meeting. On the back panel of this, oh, here's that slide, sorry guys. Um, USB, SIP, telephony, Bluetooth, and analog audio in and out, there it is. So. And by the way, there's a full open API. We are fully uh, uh, operable from Crestron, AMX, or any third-party control system. What do you not see on the back panel of this? Power, it's awesome. Just a single Cat5 from this port back to the switch, and that's it for this, this device. Here you might have your SIP phone. We've got out-of-band ports for maybe administration and management or enterprise network. This could be your SIP switch. You are listening to me right now over this USB port. That's what's plugged into my laptop. And if you don't use our line array speakers, we will give you RCA level out for your own amp and zone speakers or whatever you want to do with that. But again, no analog cables, no strippers and crimpers, right? And over here is your inputs and outputs uh, for a Cisco codec or you know, lecture capture out. We're seeing, we're going to see those applications in uh, distance learning right now and program audio in those sorts of things. So very elegant solution. Now this box, when you couple it with the microphone is what's doing all that auto discovery, auto tuning. So that's the Odessia system is the marriage of all of this together. Here is the bracket. There's that under table bracket I promised you guys to look at. So let's take a look at some rooms. We're almost done here, and then we can do a demo and kind of chat about this thing. And these are the kind of rooms we're targeting for the Odessia system. Um, this room really kind of brings it all together uh, for me is the training room environment, because this is where the Odessia really is going to have some key advantages. Now, before I had mentioned, you can use this line array speakers and the mic with anyone's DSP. This is about a 35 by 40 by 60 ish training space. And this would be kind of maxed out for the size of what a Desia can cover. Now, if you, I would put equidistant two mic arrays in these ceilings. I'd have mic A here and mic B here, and that's gonna cover this space. If I had those connected to say a biamp DSP, I might be standing in the middle of the room, have a beam on me from mic A, a beam on me from mic B, and in a traditional mix scenario, those are going to go into that biop DSP, get summed together perhaps, and then sent to the far end. And that's great. That's fine. It's going to sound good, but it's not going to be as tight as the Odessia saying, hey, wait a minute. Mike A has the better beam on Tim. I can see that. I'm only going to use beam A. So now I'm going to have a much cleaner, much tighter signal sent to the far end. So this really demonstrates another nice feature of the Odessia well, as well is you can move these tables around without having to reconfigure the lobes. Again, we're just going to cover anything under the mic. We're fully dynamic. That is the key advantage of this, especially for training rooms and reconfigurable spaces. You will not need to go back in there to reconfigure these lobes. I could put the VXL 
line arrays at one end, say on some columns, and they're going to project into the space with a comfortable listening level across the entire environment. Only 9 dB drop from 40 feet back here. And uh, as a presenter, I may go from screen to screen, and I'm going to be tracked all the way around. Every one of these tables could sit down and participate in a very lively far-end discussion because we have enough beams to cover that sort of engaging far-end discussion with these tables. So when I look at this room, I look at the lectern too, and I go, you know what? I could put our CR breakout box over there in the lectern and have a couple of mics plugged into those XLRs for presentation. Maybe I'll have a lapel or a clip-on wearable mic. So this room kind of really is where we're targeting, so the maximum size we're targeting for Adesia. Yes, you can use our ceiling mic. You could use 10, 20, 30 of them in a large environment with our DSP or somebody else's DSP. But right now the Adesia system maxes out at two ceiling mics. So these are the environments that we're kind of targeting. You know, rooms like this, for example, boardrooms, keep it neat and tidy, no wires on the wall. It's gonna cover everyone in the room. We've got just about every interface you would want in that room covered. Um, so that's kind of the, the PowerPoint presentation on this. Let me stop sharing and uh, kind of turn my camera on and show you the environment I'm in here, guys. So here I am today in my workshop here in Austin, Texas. I've got some different cameras mounted up. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see the uh, ceiling mic here is right above my head. And real quick, I'm going to show you the interoperability with Zoom. I'm going to mute it in Zoom and watch the LED for a second. So that shows that interoperability. There's the system. All I have in this room are four Cat 5s plugged into that powered switch. That gray one is where I plug into the GUI for the auto-tuning GUI. But basically, the two blue Cat 5s are my speakers, and the white Cat 5s, one is the CR box with the Matchbox cars on it for size reference, and the other one goes up to my ceiling mic that my son and I hung in here. And so I look at the room, you can see that ceiling mic again above me. And by the way, guys, one thing I forgot to mention, this ceiling microphone, all the processing's on board of it, right? So if I am using it with, a, say, a BiAmp DSP, I have three Dante streams with that mic. Echo, cancel, echo reference in from the, from the DSP, fully processed echo canceled out, and a non-linear processed out too for, for voice recognition applications. So if I'm using, so suppose I got a BiAmp DSP that's fully uh, maxed out. I got all eight AEC channels maxed, but I got an extra line level input. You could put this Adesia mic into that line level input and have us handling all the processing. So keep that in mind. But when you pair it with our CR device, now you get all of that auto tuning feature. So that was one thing I forgot to touch on. But right now, um, you know, I'm six foot tall. This is eight foot when I stick my arm up. This is set at 10 foot six inches. And again, I can walk around this room and have it track me no matter where I go. I don't have a wearable mic. And if I was still using the mic on that laptop, you wouldn't even be able to hear me now. And I've measured where this seat is. It's 12 feet from this microphone. So let's talk about that AGC we talked about. You have those folks that always mumble in the meeting and those guys that sit very quietly and talk at the end of the table. Or you might even be whispering, I am 12 feet from this microphone and I'm whispering. So that gives you an idea as I bring my volume back up, my volume back up. And traditionally, I'm a bit of a loud presenter. I'm a little dry too. Give me one second here. Thank you very much. So again, whoops, stepping on the speakers. Here's the line array speakers, 16 elements, amplifier section within them, single Cat5 cable. Now my fridge here is 17 feet away. I'm now 17 feet from this mic. I've been 25, 30 feet away at the back of my shop and had my sales guy hear me and go, wow, that's just amazing. And with this beam locked onto me, I'm now gonna step outside. I'm now outside, I'm in line of sight of the mic, and now I'm gonna whisper. I'm literally standing outside the building, about 18 feet away, whispering. So that gives you an idea of the powerful accuracy and how narrow focused the beam can be. So that's a quick demonstration of the mic in, a, in this environment. And just to show you, it was my mic. I had one guy the other day going, you got a wearable on? I'm going to swap back to my in Zoom. I've just selected the laptop mic. And now I'll get up and show you again just how powerful the difference is between 
having the Odessia in here or not. So I've basically taken this old garage and turned it into a world-class conferencing center. There's a video of me configuring this space uh, on YouTube. It's literally five minutes from when you plug everything in to when you're ready to plug in and have your meeting. Literally, an office manager, an IT manager, is capable of doing the audio tuning on this system with a few mouse clicks. So. Hey, hey, Tim, we just had a first. We had someone ask you to start up a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them are, in case my bosses hear this, are Yamaha motorcycles. So. But yeah, um, that's that's a demonstration. I think with the price point too, and j jump in here whenever you want, Greg. Uh, oh, two slides I forgot, gentlemen. I apologize. Uh, let me go back to the screen share, uh, and then Greg, you can jump in here. Um, we have our dean's list program. Yeah. So so this is interesting, guys. Uh, those of you that are selling into K to twelves or colleges or private schools, charter schools, whatever, anybody that qualifies as an educational institution. We have a really neat program called Dean's List Education Discount Program. And as you can see from this slide here, different products qualify for different levels of discount. But even though it's a brand new solution, uh, Odessia qualifies for 10% off of MSRP. So when you have a fully loaded bundle uh, of the the, the ceiling array microphone, the, the controller, the line array speakers, the, the um, Ethernet switch, the list price on that is $10,087. 10% off of MSRP means that's a bottom line discount to your education customer of $1,008.70. So that's, that's pretty huge. Um, something else that's been really nice about Yamaha is even during this COVID period when people could not get products that they wanted to. We never, we never stopped our education discount program for our customers, and that was much appreciated in the industry. So um, any other questions you guys have uh, other than firing up the motorcycles, uh, <laughs> we're, uh, we're okay here. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, Greg, I actually did have, or Tim, uh, a question. We have a conference room here, which is kind of long and narrow. Uh, right in the dead middle of it is mounted a, a video projector. So if we were to install this system, I think you've touched on it a little bit, but how would it be, a, how would the noise from the projector affect the, the pickup or can you tune that out? Yeah, so with, you should be just fine with that, with the noise cancellation and the HVD within the system. If you'd noticed in one of the camera angles I showed on my end, oh, I can actually show you here. Uh, there it is. Uh, I have a 10-ton air handler in here, and it's actually uh, downdrafting above my uh, ceiling tile. And Greg can attest on the Zoom meetings when my heater or AC is on, you can't really hear it at all. Um, so it shouldn't be an issue. And by the way, again, you could, there's no acoustical difference between having this in a drop ceiling and in an open environment like that. So just FYI. So yes, and you don't have to be fully line of sight of this too. We had one customer that already is specking it where they have a drop down lamp in the middle of a recessed alcove in the middle of an oval room. It's just an acoustic nightmare room going on. And, um, yeah, you know, some of the initial tests I've done with putting stuff that kind of blocks line of sight, you can still hear me. Greg was listening to me when I was hiding behind a motorcycle. So as long as it sees that audio source, it's going to lock on. Tim, I, Tim, I got to I got to ask you, did you see that chat question or did you happen to answer that question just as it popped up on the screen? No, I'm not <laughs> looking at the chat. That was, that was the exact question that the guy was just uh, whoever it was was just asking about line of sight. That was pretty funny. Yeah, uh, line of sight is going to be better, but example, uh, Greg, you heard birds chirping yesterday when I did this demo and opened my door, didn't you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, so the uh, birds weren't line of sight. Another, uh, another quit here, um, our question here, open API kit uh, allows uh, connection or control by Crestron or anything else. Yes. Also, Greg, I think um, in the chat, uh, there was a question here from one of the uh, attendees, which it looks like it was directed to the panelists. And I don't know if everybody else saw it, but the question was, does the processor have a built-in AGC that can be overrided? 
So yes, so even though this is a complete auto-tunable, auto-configurable system, uh, you can log into uh, the microphone and affect some of the traditional parameters you would in a DSP. You can make some changes on, on, on the, the echo cancelers, your, your mixing of the mics and, and those sorts of things. It's not fully granular like it would be in a traditional uh, DSP, but we do allow you to make some of those changes. For example, you can configure uh, a null zone. Suppose you're in an open cafeteria, open meeting area, and you've got two mics, and then you're next to a maybe a noisy, noisy area you don't want the mic beams to point at. You can do that in the GUI and exclude those. So, um, in fact, our manuals were just released and are on, on site to talk through that. So, yes, for the traditional AV folks, there's some things you can do in there, some adjustments you can make. Um, for what we consider you might come up to in the environment and need to make changes for, like that null zone within, uh, within an area. And then another question I have here, um, what is the maximum coverage in terms of room sizes? Do you need multiples in, in larger rooms? Or? Yeah, so great question. Back to me, right, right here. Just to give you guys an example, uh, this building is 30 foot wide. This door behind me is 14 by 14, and I am 50 foot deep. I, I've covered pretty much my whole shop with this. I can get almost to the back door. You start to hear a little distance at that point. So I would cover this room with two mics uh, if I was specking it out to cover the entire thing. But what we're saying in our literature is that a typical nine to 10 foot height, you're gonna get a 25 foot pickup area. Uh, I'm comfortable in a good environment out to 30 because I've literally measured how far I can get and it's beyond what we're pitching at 25. But every environment's different, right? You know, the smaller the room, the more reverberance there's going to be and that sort of thing, so. But yes, that gives you some size of scale here. I could cover, uh, and this is what we're trying to cover with Odessi, is about a 25, 30 foot area, those rooms we kind of looked at, putting two of these together for maybe a 40 by 60 training area. Because you may have a 40 by 60 room, but as you guys know, you really you know, you don't need to cover right at the walls in most cases. You can have tables within that. So your listening area in a 40 by 60 may really only be 32 by 50-ish or so. So yeah, that's kind of the size max for this. Now we can do, we can do, um, oops, we can do combine and divide spaces by using our MRX 7D DSP. That, so I want to make that clear too, in case that question comes up. The Odessia doesn't have any mechanism within for two different configurations, so it can't do a combined divide, but adding in our, or anybody's uh, Dante enabled DSP, you sure can. In fact, Greg had a, a customer application the other day where they wanted to do 10 of these ceiling mics. You can't do that with our CR processor with the audio tuning, but you can certainly use 10 of our microphones with anybody's DSP. So we can cover very large areas with these microphones. And with yeah, the so Tim, we can support two mics. Tim, that kind of gets into, there was a question too of control of the DSP. Is it a GUI or is there a real program? But um, uh, you kind of addressed that already with yeah. uh, you would need. Let's, so real quick, right now we have an open API with all of the command sets for you to go into Crestron and create your own GUI look and feel and completely control our system. Most people are going to be looking at that for the SIP aspect, right? Because we do support SIP, but we don't have a dial mechanism. Anyway, check this space in the future, right? Like we said, this is a family of products from Yamaha. We're going to be putting more and more pieces uh, there'll be new product release. They'll be part of this family in 12 months, 18 months. It's really exciting. This is the future, guys. I mean, this is what we've been talking about. I think the, the conferencing space has been very slow to have automation come into it. I, I, integration really hasn't changed much in the last 15 years in our space. You got your programmer, your wire pullers, you got to mount your devices, and you got to integrate it all together. Standardization automation these are the th these are the things that you're going to see permeating the uc space and yamaha is leading the way with this we're not going to be the only ones but we're certainly i think first because again yamaha has these technologies to bring to bear we're not just a dsp company we're not just a speaker company we're not just a mic company you know like i showed at the beginning i was blown away when i finally went to japan i mean i raced yamaha bikes in my 20s so yes it was a absolute privilege to work for japan it was a, a 
I didn't plan it in life. I just got acquired by Yamaha working for Revo Labs. So um, yeah, I actually bleed Yamaha blue. So I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with the Odessia system and really proud to bring it to market. The price point, everything about it is just really exciting right now. So. So uh, any other any other questions? We're here. Uh, also, obviously, we uh, Tim and I both support uh, TechNet Distributing. So uh, anything uh, that you need regarding our products, please uh, go to TechNet and they can they can help you out. And then we're here to uh, back them up. Um, we're also available to do um, demos like this for you directly if you need. Uh, and then Greg, I think you wanted to mention about uh, actual demo program. Yes, just um, if there are people who are needing a, a demo unit or any kind, you know, certainly reach out to your TechNex sales team member um, or send us an email and we can set something up in that regard. So we're, we're happy to facilitate that. Awesome. And yeah, please reach out to Greg and I anytime. Happy to answer any questions at all. Uh, as as a Yamaha f a field engineer, a lot of times my with any of our products, sometimes my job is to say no. Uh, I, I want to make sure that we don't put square pegs in round holes and that anytime you ask me a question, I want to make sure it's going to suit the application that you guys are trying to trying to utilize it in. So Absolutely. please don't, don't hesitate to ping us anytime. Well, Greg, thank you for the opportunity to meet with your uh, your customers here. Thank you very well, much. You guys. Uh, thanks, Tim and Greg and all who attended, and uh, we'll move it forward. Thanks a lot. All right. Have a great Let's afternoon, everybody. everybody. Take care.